Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 517. On oh, Now You Know. So Black Model 3 posted, Optimus is back at the Tesla diner with a new look in all black. So again, this is not Optimus version 3. This is version 2.5. So we haven't really seen 3 yet. No one's seen 3 yet. Wonder what it's going to do. Mm. Finally, robotic beings rule the world. According to a project filing with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation on August 27th, Starlink will be expanding its existing 1 million square foot facility in Bastrop, Texas. A new 80,000 square foot addition, that's two more acres, will be starting construction on September 26th and be completed in early January next year. Starlink's plans are to increase the size of the plant to 1.7 million square feet over the next couple of years. Starlink will be adding an additional 400 employees at the new facilities. This Starlink facility has already produced 10 million Starlink kits, and it already churns out 15,000 dishes per day. And if you're wondering where Bastrop is, Starlink in Bastrop is about 25 miles east of Giga, Texas, here on the map. The governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, posted SpaceX is growing in Bastrop thanks to a $17.3 million Texas Semiconductor Innovation Fund grant. This expansion will bring more jobs, innovation, and will strengthen Starlink's impact worldwide. And X is headquartered just down the road, just a few doors down at Hyperloop Plaza. I thought X was in San Francisco. Francisco. Not anymore. Ah, I feel like it's an official headquarters. Not much gets done there, probably. Really? I don't know. The Starlink factory is already one of the largest semiconductor related production facilities in the U.S. We're sponsored today by our good friends at Smart Charge America. I'm really happy about this partnership because we've actually been big fans of Smart Charge America for years. When our buddy Joe Barletta, the president of Smart Charge America, told us he'd like to help sponsor the show, we were both really stoked. Smart Charge America is the company to call when you need to install EV charging. Whether you're a property manager trying to figure out how to bring EV charging to your tenants, or you're just a homeowner trying to figure out how to get EV charging for your family. Trust us and make your life a whole lot easier. Go to Smart Charge America, the link is below. You'll fill out this simple form and Joe and his team will get right back to you and make it happen. And for a limited time, at least until Joe comes to his senses, use our link or tell them that Zach and Jesse sent you and you will receive 15% off your installation. Do it today. I know you'll thank us. So Starlink just signed a deal with Echo Star, that's the company that owns the Dish Network, to buy 50 megahertz of radio frequencies in the 2 to 4 gigahertz range, that is the S-band here in the U.S., and they're going to pay $17 billion for it. Starlink will be using this new spectrum to communicate directly with 5G phones without the need for cell towers. So now, even if you're in a remote region, even with just an unmodified 5G phone, you could have cell service. About 600 of these next generation satellites are already in orbit, about 340 miles up. They contain chips designed by SpaceX to make the signals stronger and faster, up to 20 times more data per satellite and over 100 times the total capacity of the old ones. This means that they can handle 5G speed. So your phone treats the satellite signal just like it would a regular cell tower signal. Starlink is partnering with T-Mobile in the US, Rogers in Canada, and others around the world so that when your phone can't find a cell tower, it will automatically switch to a satellite signal using the carrier's network. About 1.8 million people already signed up for this 10 dollar a month service. Ben Longmere, senior director of satellite engineering at SpaceX, posted compared to the Gen 1 direct to cell, Gen 2 will be 20 times the throughput to the user, 100 times the overall system throughput. And Elon said, yep, exciting times ahead. And I think it's going to save lives. It's definitely going to save lives. So Elon just reposted Mega Block. Isn't that the off brand Lego? Nope. Uh, Tesla said Megablock is our pre-engineered medium voltage block designed for 20 megawatt hour AC, 25 year life at over 10,000 cycles, 91% round trip efficiency at medium voltage, inclusive of auxiliary loads, and then all this other good electrical stuff. And deliveries are going to start in the second half of 2026. But what is it? Well, as Holmar's catalog said, so Tesla is actually going to start making transformers themselves. And then Elon said, yes. Wait, so Tesla's going to start to make transformers? transformers? Not that kind of transformer. We're going to talk about what this is on Investor Club today because it's actually a really big deal. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. What do we got today? Our buddy Tony just visited an agrivoltaics farm in Colorado. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is Tony from California. I'm out here in Longmont, Colorado at Jack's 
Solar Garden. Just did a tour with Byron, the owner and operator of this space. I'm gonna cut in some footage so you guys can see some of the things I was able to record. It's a really interesting space. Uh, feels like an epicenter for a lot of research and development around agrivoltaics a uh, topic that I love very much uh, ever since you guys introduced it to me on the show. They've got a lot of different research going on with people from uh, Colorado State University and Arizona State University. Learned a lot of things about the different microclimates created by their single axis tracking solar panels that go back and forth. Um, I think they track, track east east to west as the sun moves across the sky, uh, places where it's more humid, less humid, where there's more rainfall, more snowfall accumulation, and um, a lot of different plants and vegetables that they grow. They also have a, an amazing pollinator habitat space, and um, they're, they have plans to move out from doing vegetable production, where they tried all these different vegetables in order to do research to support uh, uh, support agrivoltaics to doing more berry berry cultivation, cane berries, and you know learned also a lot of interesting stuff about where inter interchanges go, how connections for power work. They've got like this three phase power lines here that run across like a, a main spine of infrastructure, basically enabled uh, Byron to to create the um, solar panels and uh, the energy production here. But it's a very cool spot. I'm very happy that I was able to come out here and see it after seeing so much stuff online about agrivoltaics, seeing a four acre space that's doing it uh, for real and has actual crops growing underneath, not just uh, solar grazing, was a real privilege. And now you know. I love it. We turned him on to agrivoltaics mm -hmm. and now he's going around finding them all. <laughs> this is so great. Thank you so much, Tony. That was wonderful. And I just got to say, I think that in the future, future. agrivoltaics is going to be like the biggest thing. It's this word that no one knows today, but just say it to your friends now. And then in 10 years, they're going to be like, how did you know? All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. On Patreon today, don't forget to answer for your chance to win the Tesla Model Y front cooler. We've got Patreon bonus stories just for our lovely patrons. Including Lucid's latest ad, which I might argue is the stupidest car ad ever. I don't know about that. We'll see you wonderful patrons over on Patreon. I guess you're right. Uh, Jaguar is probably the stupidest. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. Time for the shout outs. Who do we got today? We've got Patrick Brolsky, Richard Mulby, Sabrina Clark, Sukpal Singh Chima, and Victor Kessler. Thank you so much for supporting us. We can't do this show without you. And these are people who support us for $5 or more a month. And they get their name in the end credits. All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. As you can see here, New York Times had a lot of stories about Daniel Penny. No stories about Arina Zarutska. Elon said no one commits narrative crimes like the New York Times. They are the best. On this platform, the people decide the narrative. You hear all sides of an argument. Community Notes corrects everyone. No exceptions. Notes, data, and code is public source. Grok provides further fact-checking. And Elon said, as recent events have shown all too clearly, you can't trust the legacy formerly known as mainstream news at all. They lie relentlessly or simply ignore major stories that don't fit their collectively decided narrative. As soon as anyone does the slide, lightest bit of research beyond what the legacy, formerly known as mainstream news, reports, the magnitude of legacy media lies is staggering. Do some research and it'll feel like waking up from a fever dream. Wall Street Ape says Elon Musk should buy a couple of the biggest mainstream media networks and just have them tell the truth. If we had a real Republican Congress, they would restore the smith munt Act. Elon said, interesting idea. Elon said, mail-in ballots with no proof of ID are a massive source of fraud. And he said, this is not accidental. The radical left is importing voters and it's a sure way to win if not stopped. And then he posted... You'll thank me later. And I'm not exactly sure what we're going to thank him for, but I'm sure there's lots to thank him for. Elon reposted this post from 2012. People ought to think more about who wrote the software that's running in their head. Sigh, it probably wasn't them. Elon then responded to himself from over 10 years ago. He said, have you ever wondered? Then he posted, we cannot understand the true nature of the universe unless we question deeply. I want to know what is real, even if the answer is total obliteration of my consciousness. Mm. Congressman Randy Fine posted, I'm going to introduce legislation to hold judges accountable when violent repeat 
offenders, they release, commit new crimes. It's easy to release criminals when you're protected by an armed bailiff at all times. The rest of us aren't so lucky. Elon said, sorely needed. Elon then said, are you awake now? Penning 2X said, Elon knew about the mind virus 15 years ago. And Elon then responded, society has been a slow motion train wreck since then. Xavier said, so let me get this straight. A bartender can go to prison for serving drinks to a drunk person if they drive and murder someone, but judges aren't accountable for letting a 14-time repeat offender murder a young woman. Between now and then, name and shame the DAs and judges who enable murder <laughs> and robbery, but especially shame those who funded the campaigns of the DAs and judges. That will make the biggest difference. Difference. GB Politics posted a new Banksy artwork of a judge attacking a neutral protester appears outside the royal courts of justice amid free speech controversy. And then one hour later, they covered it up. Elon said the more they try to cover it up, the more it will appear. You know that you're losing when Banksy's against you. <laughs> Yeah. Elon posted this meme. Good evening. Here's what we want you to believe today. Elon says, now do you understand how much the legacy, formerly known as mainstream media, lies simply by ignoring a subject? Choice of narrative is their primary form of deception. Then Elon reposted Tesla's post, the future is golden. And Wokeness posted 74,221 AP articles about George Floyd, zero articles about Arena Zarutska. Elon said, divide by zero ratio. Andrew Curran says, OpenAI is helping make an AI-generated feature-length animated movie movie that will be released in theaters in 2026. Total production time, nine months. Total budget, 30 million. The plan is to debut Critters at Con in May. And Elon said four to six months. Also had a good conversation with the makers of EVE Online. We discussed the possibility of collaborating on an AI game, something that only AI could do. And then the rabbit hole posted, most crime is committed by people with three plus prior arrests. It's a relatively small handful of criminals causing a lot of the problems we see. Elon said, incarcerating a small number of repeat violent criminals would vastly improve public safety. This must be done now. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community. What do we got today? David found that the Australian FSD update literally has an upside down screenshot for the FSD. So if you take a look at why did they do that? Because it's Australia. They're upside down the whole time. <sighs> oh, gotcha. Jeff got a shot of a Cybertruck with a rooftop tent and a mini Starlink. That's cool. Max got a peek inside of a supercharger in Tucson, Arizona. JD's friend decorated their Model Y. <laughs> Everyone's going to be calling it. I know. <laughs> Doug spotted it in an electric bus in California and a pair of Lucid Airs. Nice. And Joe spotted the next gen delivery vehicle by Oshkosh. Wait, I thought it was an EV. Uh, Some of them aren't. I think 80% of them aren't. Oh, my it's God. Like 20% of them are EVs and the rest are all gas. So. Oh, man. And they look ridiculous. They do. And the funny thing is, out of context, they kind of look like, oh, it's like a Pixar vehicle. They're enormous. Yeah, I know. I saw one the other day. I was like, oh, it's huge. Because you think that little motor section, mm -hmm. it looks all squashed. No, it's humongous. Thank you for joining us today, everybody. Don't forget to head over to Patreon next for your bonus stories and to enter for your chance to win the Tesla Model Y front cooler. See you on Thursday, everybody. Now you know.